COVID-19 has forced an abrupt shift to remote and new ways of work, and many have learned the hard way that organizational agility is critical for survival. Um, in response, organizations have adopted flexible and collaborative approaches to keep the lights on and the businesses moving forward. Innovative and proactive culture continue once the crisis has passed. Um, to survive and thrive in the new world of work, organizations need to be ready to lead a quick but considered recovery. So we are joined here by um, the three of them uh, to learn how each of their company is navigating the current hiring landscape, what this pandemic has uh, taught them as a business and how they are preparing their business and most importantly, employees to emerge in a new world of work. Uh, let's start with um, our three uh, panelists. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alex. Um, I'm the Business D Development Manager at Trent. Uh, so Trent Global is a private education institute. Uh, we run diplomas all the way to masters. Uh, our flagship product is a coding bootcamp that is endorsed and subsidized by IMDA, the government. So uh, they endorse it because uh, it aims to convert individuals with no technical tech background uh, to gain employment in the tech sector. So we have trained people uh, from all walks of life, oil and gas, um, FMB, and then now they are now working at places like uh, Singtel, uh, Love Bonito, um, and Cystic even. So we also help uh, companies digitize their processes. Thank you, um, Alex. Um, Isan, would you like to talk a bit more about yourself and uh, uh, Inc? Um Hi, I'm Isan, CEO of Hoots Inc Productions. Uh, we're a full service production house uh, for all forms of entertainment in multiple languages from TV series to online clips, uh, commercials, branded content, documentaries, live shows. So what that means is uh, we go all the way from the idea uh, through to scripting, through to casting, prep, production, filming, uh, editing, post-production, music, audio, and then giving the final product. Thank you. Andrew, a little bit more about Wantali Singapore. I'm Andrew. I'm the country manager at Wantali. I work closely with our team, including May, to achieve Wantali's mission, to create a world where work drives passion. So we are very passionate about helping companies attract the right talent and retain the best talent by championing employer branding. Gu Zhu Ping Pai. Our social hiring subscription platform is unique in Singapore and I'm so excited to have the opportunity today to share more. I appreciate the work that SCCCI do and look forward to meeting with all the business experts in the audience after today when possible. So all three are from very diverse um, business landscape, right? We have a college, a school, we have a production house, and of course, Wantali is a HR tech space, it's a, more of a startup culture. So this will be a very good insight into how each of these businesses are um, affected by COVID-19. Andrew, would you like to start how um, the tech landscape, the hiring landscape has been affected, or Wantali Singapore at large has been affected by the um, pandemic? Yes, yes. Um, very on point question, right? Um, when you talk to people about hiring during COVID or during CB, what do you think they will respond? You know, how do you think they will react? And that's what recruiters, traditional job platforms undoubtedly face. But for us at Wantali, our message has been stronger than ever. In good times, you can shout about your company, how good it is. But what is even more important is in bad times to do the right thing, respectable thing, and to communicate all of that effectively. HR has no doubt become one of the most important functions during the crisis. So our business, during a time that is undeniably a stress test for companies' recruitment and retention strategies, is to guide them to engage their employees better, manage their company reputation, and continue to build your talent pipeline if possible. Because when we recover and emerge from all of this, right, your stakeholders, including your future employees, they're going to ask you, how did you react during COVID-19? Good question. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a question that I foresee will be asked a lot uh, post-pandemic when, you know, that when recruitment picks up and we are starting to see more candidates. Um, it speaks volumes on how, as a company and as a business, um, you, you manage the company and your employees, most importantly, during the pandemic. 
um, Isan, please let us know how how has a, a production house, especially when you guys are always out, uh, and you know uh, it's the key thing to be out, to be shooting, to be filming, and um, I can foresee that you guys are affected the most uh, out of like us sitting comfortably in an office. <laughs> so how has that worked for you? How is your, how has uh, Husi been affected by COVID nineteen? Okay, I, I wouldn't say that we're the most affected, but definitely... One off, yeah. uh, sorry? One off, yes. Yes, definitely affected like everyone else. Um, uh, many projects have been either postponed indefinitely or been scaled down. So the volume of work has been affected for sure. And also because it's an unprecedented situation we are in, like, you know, what Andrew said is absolutely correct. You know, HR has become like one of our main focuses now. Um, but... Being the first pandemic we're really facing, um, many clients are having a knee-jerk reaction. A lot of people are, the, the first thing is, okay, cut back first with, uh, you know, better safe than sorry mentality. So that makes things slightly more difficult. Uh, that, that's for production in general, being safer than sorry, which is not the wrong thing. It's just yeah. that is what causes the, yeah, most yeah. of our problems. Mm. Alex, uh... For Trend Global College, I mean, we always hear about home-based learning and home-based learning, but it's almost like touching, you know, your, your traditional, your traditionally your secondary school, your primary school. But as a college, um, how have you guys been affected? Yeah, so we mostly deal with, with working adults and international students. Mm. So definitely at the education side, you know, the whole world knows that Singapore education is, is, is a great product. So we, we do see a reduction in, in sales for international students, definitely. Uh, even students who are uh, working here, foreign students that are working here, and they want to convert into a student, that that also like ICA does not allow as well. So that that was a pain for us. Uh, so we do see a strong push uh, by the government, however, to upscale. So that helps the education sector, you yeah. know, with money coming from subsidies from the government. So uh, we're, we're definitely thankful for the government to to really support. Uh, I think the whole labor force in in that way to really train uh, and upskill, you know, to be a global, co to be competitively uh, globally, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, okay, so uh, thank you for that. That's very important to know. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about is that um, productivity, right? Uh, with all this, uh, you know, working from home, business happening, what are your thoughts on productivity matters more than sit time? Uh, you would have seen dozens, if not hundreds, of, of hot takes on what COVID-19 virus means for working and hiring uh, for the broader economy. So, what are your thoughts? Uh, is this something that you have practiced even uh, before the pandemic? Like, uh, you know, uh, is this something that you encourage uh, your employees to do uh, maybe once a week work from home, even before uh, the whole pandemic happened? 100% um, without a doubt, uh, productivity trumps, right? Um, in our company, we empower members to master their work and, and trust them with the autonomy to achieve their goals. So this is uh, a, a, a company culture, but it's also a necessary uh, cause of action because we have been communicating remotely since we were formed day one because we have teammates in Hong Kong, we have teammates in Japan. So as an international firm, we need this uh, remote work arrangement remote communication arrangement. So, 100% productivity. Um, Alex or Isan, has this been something you guys practice even before this? Um, as in working from home? Yes. Uh, yes, we have flexible work arrangements. So, we okay. already have that. But um, as much as I 100% agree with Andrew, uh, that, you know, productivity is always paramount. Uh, what we decided to do was uh, we we made a conscious effort not to make it about productivity just during this time. Mm. Um, also because, you know, we're in production, which is actually a very social job. Um, so we felt because of the line that we are in, it would become counterproductive for us at this time to make everyone deliver the same way they were delivering their workload last year. Okay, it would for sure add unnecessary pressure, stress, uh, and we thought, okay, let's not make things worse uh, when we should focus on their health and safety. So that, that happens to work for us uh, in, in, our, in our line. Mm -hmm. uh, so a few months ago, we made it a more flexible arrangement. It was about 
we wanted to engage them more. You know, when you're working, sometimes engagement gets, slips through the crack. So we made it more yeah. about engagement and upskilling this time. Uh, working from home, uh, I mean, I know some of them also complaining. It made them feel a bit disconnected. For most of us as well, sometimes not as motivated. One person said to me, oh, well, I have very hard to work when my bed is right behind me. So, you know, it's... Um, so we created a work from home team structure where they got to work in mini groups, uh, oh. whether it's via Zoom or WebEx, so that... Um, or even group uh, WhatsApp group chats. Huh? We left it up to them. You know, you don't want to comb your hair, fine. Just <laughs> <laughs> so long as you work together. So, for example, previously, if uh, one person was delivering one script a week, now we have two people delivering one script a week. They end up being happier. Mm. Actually, the script ended up being better. Yeah. <laughs> so the only thing was that productivity is slightly lower. And because we live in a different time, so we had to focus on things like communication skills, etiquette, mm -hmm. accountability, professionalism, and actually very important boundaries. Lah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what we chose to work on. Not that this will work for everyone, but it, it yeah. kind of worked for okay. us. Lah. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've been told uh, a lot of times of people that I hear about from other companies, like this, uh, you know, the last three months is, was very difficult for everyone. And it is not, it's okay. It's not a time to be thriving, but people are in a survival mode, right? So... Uh, people are not in a thriving mode and that's okay. So you, you have to be a bit more understanding in the aspect. Also, like one of the things we do at uh, One Thirdly, Andrew, is that, you know, we start off our weekly meetings by asking how everyone is. I think not checking zoom in on like, how's the work last week, you know? So I think that's quite uh, paramount. Um, Alex, uh, what about you? How have you been um, achieving remote work with your team, uh, you know, uh, from the uh, education point of view? Yeah, so I, th I think definitely it was quite a challenge because in, in Singapore, it's quite uh, traditional in, in the way that we conduct the classes. So we have, I think, about maybe 30 to 50 trainers and lecturers. And so all our classes are all physical classes. Yeah. So I, I, I could remember that um, I think when it, when it first started, uh, like way back in January or February, when we first heard a few cases in China already, so we were already quite quick to, you know, make sure that our e-learning e stuff were, were working and, and how, to, how to move it. So I think when, when the government put the, the lockdown measures, uh, we did manage to transition uh, to an online mode uh, well. Uh, definitely, I, I do agree with Isan about the uh, social aspect. I, I could feel it, uh, a huge dip, especially in a school. So, you know, when, when you see a lot of buzzing and you hear the, the buzzing as well in a school, so you don't see that anymore and, and online also you know you could just switch off your your cameras uh and and you don't collaborate so uh, that's something that that we i think in the last few weeks we tried to touch on so things like um uh, coming up with uh stories like heartwarming stories within the school community to be shared uh and and posted uh, in our edms and things like that so that that's one way that we're trying to uh, build up, you know, socially as well. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, once the pandemic blows over and restrictions are lifted, um, you can expect suffering sectors to come back with major recruitment changes and fierce competition over top talent. So next, I am going to touch on employer branding and how it matters. I think the, the perfect person to talk about this would be um, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, one of one third least uh, USP is... Uh, uh, one of uh, one third least unique uh, selling point is employer branding. Uh, tell us more about that and why this is an important strategy. Uh, also, what it means for hiring and for companies um, to attract top talents with employer branding. I'll, I'll try to keep this short. Um, mm -hmm. Employer branding or gu uh, zu ping pai, as I shared just now. Traditionally, recruitment success right is regarded as the placement of a hire. That's why, if you think about it, headhunters charge a success fee. That is why your HR manager, the KPI is to fill a position for the department head. But this creates a problem. There is no consideration for employee success, meaning there's also no company success. Why? If the employee is not the right fit, he or she, simple example, will jump ship. We know how it is these days. So many job hoppers, right? And that doesn't bode well for the company. You spend so much, in this example, you spend so much on a headhunter, and then the employee leaves in 10 months, and you need to repeat the process again. 
not to mention all the training and onboarding uh, that, that you invested in, right? So the solution, and this is where employer branding comes in, the solution is to achieve a right fit, a good match of shared purpose, shared values, expectations between the employer and the talents. And employer branding allows you to achieve all of this, to engage with the talent even before they join you and for a long time after they have joined you. I will also say one more point um, about what Ethan uh, mentioned just now when he said knee jerk, right? A successful hiring strategy allows you to proactively and consistently build your talent pipeline mm. and to always target the right audience. Hiring, we agree, shouldn't be a knee jerk reaction. In today's uncertain world, there's a need to hire talents that can transform our business for the future of work. Uh, and, and based on today's topic, you know, example, workers who are able to thrive in a remote work environment. So this is something that companies need to pay attention to. And our platform allows you to do that talent targeting. Thank you. That, that's very good to know. Um, so before we move on to the next topic um, of um, upskilling and uh, training, uh, reskilling and training, uh, just a bit on in, uh, of an insight that I read about. So the pandemic forces uh, companies, employees to change the way they work almost overnight. And as the containment phase of the crisis gradually recedes, uh, you might expect more uh, remote working to uh, fade as well. However, companies now plan to make it a 30% online versus 70% uh, online offline working model a permanent thing, having learned, um, having experienced from this pandemic. So um, there's also a study uh, by McKinsey Global Institute that uh, es estimated as many as 375 million workers or 14% of the global workforce would have to switch occupations or acquire new skills uh, by 2030 uh, because of automation and artificial intelligence. And this pandemic, however, has made this more need more urgent. So workers across industries must figure out how they can adapt to rapidly changing conditions and companies have to learn how to match those workers to new roles and activities. But this dynamic is more about than just remote working on what we touch on, or more than just uh, automation or AI. It's about how leaders can reskill or upskill their workforce to deliver new business models in the post-pandemic um, era. So to meet this challenge, companies uh, should craft a talent strategy that develops employees' um, critical digital and cognitive capabilities, uh, their social and emotional skills, and their adaptability and resilience. This is something that uh, we touch a lot, especially in Singapore. So now is the time for companies to double down on their learning budgets and commit to reskilling. Because um, in the long run, developing this muscle will also uh, strengthen companies uh, you know, for future disruptions should Choi, another pandemic happen. So with that, companies need the right people to navigate the new normal and best understand these new unique business challenges. What are some new skill sets or training in place you have planned for acquiring and engaging um, future talents? We definitely look for right fit in terms of values. Our company's values, or one of the values is code wins arguments. Don't waste time in debating. Instead of debating for days whether a new idea is possible or what the best way to build something is, just try, just do and see what works. Another value we champion is get things done. We provide autonomy to each team, as I mentioned, and we trust that they will deliver. Similarly, they expect the management not to micromanage. Why I mentioned this is this is not just in the application and screening process. It's also during the onboarding and training. So you need to make sure that this message is delivered to your talent so that the right expectations are met. Mm. Also, we look for relevant experience and transferable skills for sure, right? Um, digital literacy, digital savviness is so important in this world today. So if we need somebody to do inside sales instead of traditional sales, um, I will interview him on his or her sales methods. If we need somebody who can manage our CRM, I will seek out for talents who have experience with Salesforce or HubSpot. Um, and I guess finally, and, and, and this was cited uh, by me, we look for the ability to learn the courage to try. 
somebody who's flexible, who can show that they are flexible, they are dynamic because these traits allow for a resilient worker who can handle changes, sudden changes, unforeseen changes, disruptions that our now new yeah. normal will bring and these talents can be trained. We trust that they can learn. Because, uh, yeah, it's very interesting because even I read that, you know, uh, even your general, your GPs are doing remote video chat consultations instead of in-person uh, consultations and, uh, you know, uh, companies like even not just for employees, even for, it's a learning curve even for managers to figure out how to lead their teams virtually, how to maintain cohesion uh, without the benefit of, you know, informal coffee chats, corridor chats or, you know, face-to-face -face meeting. And a lot of um, the pandemic has also accelerated the trend towards e-commerce rather than your brick and mortar sales. So knowing how to learn uh, for the sales team to shift up from uh, physical meetings to managing customer relationship uh, effectively in remote settings um, is key also. Uh, Isan at Who's Inc., uh, what about you guys? Um, yeah, you said productions are definitely affected. Uh, are you planning to implement reskilling for your employees, perhaps like uh, if you need more animators versus a regular editor, for example? Yeah, we actually put in place, uh, because, you know, tra okay, training has always been uh, a major part of our company, but yes. we put in place two to three different training processes since March. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Doskan Orange, you know, we were still quite unclear. We weren't sure in Feb, you know, is this long term? Is this just a couple of months? But once we knew it was here to stay, uh, we needed a long-term plan. So, so we put in place um, an on-the-job training plan where they could do it from home. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also got an external trainer to train everyone in soft skills, which is crucial. I mean, both you and Andrew have mentioned it. You know, soft skills are needed no matter what happens pre-COVID, during COVID, yeah. post-COVID. You know, um, and no matter what job or industry you're in, that's the one thing that will... That will um, keep you employed, you know, resilience, resourcefulness, care. So uh, we, we did one on soft skills and we just kick-started a, a remote training plan uh, which started a few weeks ago where we do cross-training. So, for example, writers are being trained to be assistant directors. Post-production people are being trained for production management. Um, what happens is, okay, this cross-training for production, what it does is it expands each person's skill sets. So they are, they are able to move around within a production with ease. So if, if there's a crisis, they can move towards the more digital side. If there's no crisis, uh, they can move actually into any area since they are multi-skilled yes. uh, and will never be caught off guard by crisis again. <laughs> la, touch wood. La. Yes. Um, but more importantly, I feel, I mean, that's for everyone else. Our management team, uh, myself uh, included, we're also being trained because we've never been trained in this before on how to manage effectively during this time. Um, how, how we can value add to each person at Hoods Inc. and do it with empathy, you know. So it's an all-round full company training and that's something we've never had before. Mm -hmm. uh, just to be clear, we're in production. So we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not reinventing yeah. the output that you get to see on TV or online. We are reinventing how we make the wheel. Yeah. And, and, and that was very important for us. That There's no choice. We have to do it. And it's been a good move. I mean, we were forced into it because of COVID, but it's a, it's a good move. Lah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, cross-function uh, cross training, uh, pandemic or otherwise, I think it's a good thing as well for each employee in different roles. Uh, understand what everyone is doing in different roles and how it contributes to the greater uh, company uh, direction, right? Um, and how every part pay, plays. So, whether or not you fully in depth know what other person is doing, but it's still good to know how everyone contributes to the bigger picture, pandemic or otherwise. Um, yeah, thanks for that. That's very insightful. Um, Alex at Trend Global College, um, in fact, you guys were actively hiring even during peak circuit breaker. We are talking about April here, uh, particularly for the role of a BIM lecturer. Um, uh, do you now require, I mean, like now that it's shifted, like April uh, feels like a long time ago, and but you were still hiring. Do you now require the role of this lecturer to be able to implement and conduct um, online lessons or with the know-how to operate um, such tools as opposed to the usual physical classroom session? Is this something new that you will, you know, in future hiring, like uh, a new requirement that you have for your lecturers? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I think one of the good news uh, on, on the education side is that the authorities have allowed uh, our traditional uh, degrees and diplomas, uh, you know, that were previously in physical format, 
uh, to be in an online blended format. So this means that you know the recruitment of international students wise, uh, you, we could uh, be doing this three months like online learning while the student is in Hong Kong before they come over uh, to learn physically and experience Singapore. So that also increases the need for our lecturers and trainers uh, to be equipped with, with the latest tools uh, with online learning uh, to be able to facilitate a very collaborative and uh, uh, innovative learning style. So the use of like Epic Pen uh, on oh. Zoom is, is, is really needed to, in order to like free hand draw uh, the concepts and everything. Uh, and it's a free tool. Uh, so we, yeah. we trained our, our trainers in that. Um, so that is great to know what you guys are doing for your employees, for yourself even, it's very important. Now we talk a bit more about um, the companies themselves. Um, to re-emerge from the uncertainty in a position of strength, uh, businesses, uh, adaptation and ev evo evolution will be required. Sorry, Have you already started preparing your post-COVID uh, recruitment strategies or if perhaps you already have them in place for your business, having learned from the uncertainties in the last uh, six months? Uh, one example is that maybe you look at your existing talent inventory, uh, you know, you may... Uh, this is a sad nature of it. You may not need the same type of talent any longer, or you may uh, be you may be a retailer that previously hired high volume floor staff, but now have shifted, like I said, from brick and mortar to e-commerce. Um, then you now need more warehouse staff to facilitate this, for example. So, um, Andrew, let's start with one thirty. This is also very good for me to know. Have you already started preparing post COVID uh, recruitment strategies for ourselves as well as uh, how we help our businesses uh, and the companies that are on the one thirty platform? Even though Wanterly is a SaaS business, software as a service, and we have a startup culture. Uh, so all this meant that we were already embracing strategies like inside sales, inbound marketing. Uh, we already had flexible work arrangements in our co-working office space, right? But COVID-19 still brought with it and forced challenges. Uh, one very real example uh, that happened before and during Circuit Breaker is two of our hires, uh, they signed their employment contracts just before Circuit Breaker, literally uh, one or two days before. And one of them, we got to meet at the office. Uh, you know, we had them visit us before as part of the interview. And the other, she could only interview virtually. The whole process was done virtually. And thereafter, when we, you know, welcomed them, all their onboarding, all done online. So for over two months until well into phase two, uh, the, the whole team did not get to meet each other face to face uh, before because there were new members, right? This is something that we are prepared for moving forward. Uh, and I'll share that we place great emphasis on three pillars during the application and selection process. Wanterly always encourages our companies to adopt this Wanterly visit approach as opposed to a traditional, one-directional, one-dimensional interview process. And this really stands in good state for post-COVID talent management. Why? Wanterly visits suggest an office visit in place of an interview. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the physical criteria that is important, but rather the approach. Think of this visit as a casual interview, a more casual interview, and crucially, a two-way conversation where both parties get to learn about one another. If I may, uh, it's like romance. In today's day and age, dating is much more welcome than jumping into a pre-arranged marriage. Am I right? So sure. this cannot take place physically. How do you visit virtually? The three pillars that I mentioned, we encourage companies to place emphasis on, on this when interviewing the candidate. First, show your work environment. And in a virtual world, that means explaining how the company is managing remote work. Second, introduce the team members. And this is so important because you literally spend majority of your waking hours with your colleagues. Finally, share or suggest the company culture, i.e. your mission, your values. What this allows you, the employer, to do, right, and, and we are prepared to do moving forward, is to introduce, set, manage expectations. Allow for the employee to flourish when he or she joins your company. And the magic happens after we have seen when you have employee success, they will become advocates of your company. Yeah. They will champion your product or service. 
they will be ambassadors and help you refer more look-alike talents into the company. So what we are adopting, what we are prepared to do, uh, and what I'm sharing here is really the start of a sustainable approach to talent management. Alex, what about uh, Trend Global College? What are some of the strategies that you already are planning for, uh, you know, having learned uh, from the past uh, five months? Yeah, so um, I, I think talent retention is, is one. And also in terms of moving forward for the recruitment, uh, we value learning de dexterity highly in, in, our, in our college. So you may not know everything, uh, but you know, if we point you in the right direction, you're able to go and uh, unlearn what you have learned and then re-pick it up. So especially you know, when, when now when every dollar that you spend, even in, in recruitment, is, is so important, uh, you want to get the right talent. So I think a process that we have placed, put in place after the initial first meetup uh, virtually is also to, to do uh, virtual and digit, uh, like case studies, virtual case studies. Uh, where we give uh, our shortlisted candidates like two weeks on a, on a business case uh, and then they go and, and do it and then they come back. Of course, throughout that two weeks, they can ask us questions about it. But this really helps us to see uh, the potential of, of, of the candidate, the thought process, and also like uh, the caliber as well. So things like in terms of, uh, is he familiar with the latest Google algorithm uh, on SEO and SEM, uh, these kind of things. Uh, and, and we can really see that when he is doing uh, the, the case study. What about Isan? What about you guys? Uh, how are you preparing? Uh, you're also actively hiring on our platform actually. So how are you move, like, now this is a higher, you know, mid, uh, mid COVID. So uh, how are you guys taking these hires forward? And is there anything that you were looking for uh, differently than uh, you are looking for differently than you did before? Uh, you know, uh, and to be in line with your company strategies moving forward. Okay, so um, how we are hiring is not changing. We we really like meeting wantedly. Uh, well, it's been a year plus, and it's actually worked out well because uh, you've also guided us through a better fit for whoever joins us, and and for that we're eternally grateful. So, in terms of how we're hiring, um, the strategy hasn't changed very much. But in terms of retention and new hires. Uh, okay, so firstly, we've been working towards a new, somewhat crisis-proof venture, uh, which we hope to launch within the next few months. Oh. Uh, it's yeah, it's PNC for now, but hopefully we'll have good news to share soon. Um, and on that note, that's why we're keeping the hiring process open, because we will require a far more diverse talent pool once that project takes off. Mm -hmm. So secondly, what we did was we went through our existing team, our strengths, what areas we are lacking. Um, already, as I mentioned, some roles have been combined into one role. Uh, some roles have been changed slightly to incorporate other duties. Um, and this is long term. This is not just for um, the uh, COVID, you know. Um, and all this is in consultation with each staff because, you know, as you know, people do their best work when it's something they're passionate about or something where, where they feel they can grow professionally or personally. So we've done this in consultation for what are the key strengths we have. And because of that, and because of our core team shifts, we found areas that we are lacking. Right. And those are the roles that we're actively looking for over the next few months. Uh, for these candidates who will be using the upcoming project as the launch pad for uh, exciting them with these, <clears throat> with these new roles. Uh, and these are new post-COVID, or I mean, could still be in the middle of COVID. <laughs> who knows? Watch yeah. this space. Yeah. Yeah. So for everyone listening in, keep in mind that what has worked in the past won't necessarily work in the future. So because of she's in labor market, updates to regulation, which we all have to keep ourselves updated about, and the tight race for talent should all inform your strategy. Because like what Alex said, or what you said, what Andrew said is uh, particular for, you know, the hiring industry, for the uh, for education sector, for media and production. So, and just like, uh, we have, I, I, I know that we have some marketeers on board as well, not just the hiring, uh, the recruiting. So, just like marketeers, uh, recruiting teams need to pivot their strategy, your strategy based on your current audience's need. So, you know, what Isan is doing and um, the need for, you know, lecturers to now uh, employ uh, remote learning techniques. So, employers uh, like yourselves should start thinking about how you can target different talent segments to align with a new business strategy. Um, next, we are moving on to uh, our next topic, which is a stress test on companies' recruitment and retention strategies, right? All companies are being stretched and being tested on, you know, managing your employees and managing your companies and managing morale at the same time. So, uh, something to take note of, no matter what situation your business is in, every hire you make 
uh, will directly impact your organization's ability to adapt to the changes ahead. Uh, as how we work will continue to evolve uh, in the next few months or years. So building a winning workforce um, post-pandemic have also transformed as employers lean into virtual tools to prepare the future of work and ensure efficiency, which is very important, like some of the roles have been doubled up and everything. So now I'll talk about more on how each of these companies um, engage their employees and if this is something you'll continue uh, uh, in the foreseeable future. Is there anything that you're do doing differently, um, Andrew, to engage your employees? Uh, and is this something that uh, you will continue, like, you know, like something that you think works now and like there's no reason to, to let it go uh, post-pandemic? I think so, very much. Um, in an office setting, there are plenty of opportunities to engage. But in a remote work setting, not so much. Um, you know, you mentioned um, it's important when we are gathering remotely, we ask, how, how, how's everyone today or how's everyone this week? Because in an office that we have already take pla taken place in the so-called water cooler chats, right? So pre-COVID, we never had dedicated R&R &R time during the work week. It was organic, like, hey, want to go makan or not? So throughout this period, CB and after CB, we have set aside one afternoon each week for a group activity for team building and team bonding. Um, I reckon this will definitely continue because you have to be more deliberate. Um, you have to pay special attention uh, to welfare, to well-being, to employee engagement. So I really want to say this at this point as well, when there's enforced work from home rather than a flexible remote arrangement, right? Things are different. Yeah. Um, the welfare, the well-being of your teammates, of your members are equally as important as to goal setting. Mm. So this is something that should not be left to software or hardware, but hardware. Um, you know, okay. you know <laughs> care for your work family. Yeah. Um, Alex, so is there anything that you are doing differently currently to engage your employees? And do you think this is something that you will continue um, in the foreseeable future? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with Andrew. Uh, definitely what he says, like, you know, warms the cockles of my heart. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but I, I do agree with him about uh, employee engagement. Um, I think... Uh, you know, to not see your 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 staff as a resource, and and definitely you know your team uh, can definitely feel you know as as a boss like what culture you set. Uh, so I think we have been quite intentional on, on the management team side uh, to really uh, to make sure that uh, during this this time that their goals, uh, so their career goals, uh, how the company can help them individually progress you know long term as a career. Um, and even, you know, if let's say they are, they are stagnating, you know, like switch up the job scope uh, to, to help them uh, flourish. Um, so I think, I think to be very intentional about that, uh, that's something that this COVID period has taught us and we'll continue to do. Um, and we can feel it like that during the, the good or bad times, the team will stick with you uh, and, and, and they will put in, you know, the hard work because they can tell that the boss is fighting for them as well. Yeah, I think Andrew and Alex have put it very well. Uh, so, um, yeah, engagement is a is a crucial step. Yeah, it was very important before COVID. It is critical now. So we are actively working on engagement actually more than anything else. Um, also because that varies from person to person. It depends on their personality, their wants, their needs, their goals. You know, so so we have to curate specific engagement plans for each person, you know? So for example, we have one person who's very motivated to learn as much as possible about the production industry, but mm -hmm. uh, he only has experience in styling. So we're pulling him out of his comfort zone with his, uh, with his approval, of course, uh, putting him in post-production, creating graphics and animation, as you mentioned before, uh, May. And that's been working out well so far. We can see his growth, his passion, how his nervousness is slowly going away. So, you know, whatever we have come up with, we will continue. Uh, including more training in production-related areas. But it is a fluid and flexible plan uh, we, that, yeah. that we have to change as and when required, depending on state of the crisis, and as well as the individual. You know, um, seriously, we have a wide, uh, as we say here, we have a really mixed bag of nuts uh, <laughs> working at hood. So uh, each it. person, yeah, nobody is similar. One person is never similar to another person. So we have to do this individually. 
Mm. I think fluid and flexible is a good word to remember. Like, you know, flexibility uh, in the grand scheme of things in um, how you approach your uh, future candidates, current employees, uh, you know, business plans. Uh, we should always make room um, for that. Uh, this is open to um, any three of you. Are there any roles, curious, curiously, are there any roles that you previously do not recognize uh, in your organization, but which you are highly considering as part of your new recruitment strategy? Is there any? Yeah, I think maybe it's, it's a sh- may, maybe similar uh, type of roles, but extra emphasis, extra attention paid to, to this type of candidates. So there's always been talk about seeking creative talents, candidates who can think out of the box, um, candidates who are comfortable to step out of their comfort zone. Um, and you can show that, that COVID-19 is not a comfort zone for anyone, right? Yeah. So job seekers are eager to ask employers, how did you react during COVID-19? I'm also interested to meet my future teammate and ask him, how did you respond during COVID-19, right? Did you display... Um, you know, you have done something outstanding for yourself during COVID-19 through your continued job search, through your professional development, through your personal discovery, and also goodwill for others in greater need. Someone who can show all these aspects, um, I feel, I believe, will have the attitude to help wantonly achieve our mission. Um, I would like to just um, share some key considerations before we move uh, and say goodbye. Because of the new... Uh, of the continued economic challenges and influx of new talent in the marketplace, employers will have more leverage and salary expectations and offers will likely change. So, uh, employers should take a total rewards approach when offering entry-level candidates a position because while salary is important, um, at this current moment, candidates also value stability more than ever um, right now. Uh, next point I would like to say is um, diversity and inclusion. Uh, employers can inspire change in the workforce by displaying inclusivity on their career side or removing gender bias in job descriptions. Um, and you can apply technology to help remove unknown bias and empowering employees to exemplify inclusivity and a welcoming culture. Um, third, um, over the past few years, um, employers have been reporting a tech talent uh, shortage, uh, which impacts a long-term business success. These skills are in demand and answering the calls uh, with more graduating uh, with tech degrees year over year. So this is good news for employers, especially with such a need for technology today to improve your current IT operations. So one example is just uh, ensure your career site is dynamic and mobile friendly and pivot event strategies that enable you to host virtual career fairs. Um, this uh, as it has been proven, this is going to be even more vital um, going forward. And... Um, Lastly, uh, as un- unemployment rates uh, increase and more businesses struggle, that optimism felt at the beginning of the year is uh, quickly diminishing. So to navigate this new reality, many businesses have found a way to embrace remote work and we need to do the same with embracing virtual recruiting and hiring. So take the time now to implement the right strategies and technologies because the way you treat uh, candidates and welcome new employees to your workforce will have a lasting impact on them and your business's uh, bottom line. So this is just to uh, wrap up uh, everything that uh, we say uh, with input from Andrew, Isan, um, and Alex Yen. Thank you so much uh, for joining us um, today, taking the time out this morning. If you want to download our employer branding resource, um, you can type that in uh, or you can scan it directly. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.